Hello there guys and welcome to another episode of Under the City where we explore everything about the Tube. Today we will be looking over the district line which stretches from Ealing Broadway, Richmond, Wimbledon and Kensington Olympia though that run runs on the limited service all the way to Upminster in Zone 6. To get your head round this gigantic green 40 mile machine we need to look back to the 1800s again. More specifically December 1868 where the modern district line found its roots in services operated by the Metropolitan Railway between Kensington and Westminster. Since the district line needed its own trains, it began running its own trains by 1871. By then, it had extended to Mansion House and West Brompton, with Mansion House being a new terminating station. Also, it is worth noting that there were actually stations past Ealing Broadway, which is a terminus on the route that is shared with the central line. In fact, the line even went as far as Windsor, but they scrapped it because it appeared that the people who live around there could probably get their own private transport anyway. Then Hammersmith was reached and the line was extended again to Richmond due to the help of the tracks of the London and South Western Railway and the line now reached places such as Ealing Broadway, Hounslow and Wimbledon. As part of the construction of the Circle Line, the line was extended to Whitechapel and Upminster was reached in 1902, which is still the most easterly station of the Tube. In the early 1900s, electrification of the line was financed by Charles Yerkes, a big backer of electric railways at the time. The first electric train on the district line ran in 1903 between Ealing and South Harrow. In 1905, EMUs or electric multiple units were fully rolled out across the line and now East Ham was the eastern terminus. Hounslow and Uxbridge was reached by via a two to three car shuttle from Mill Hill Park which has now been renamed to Acton Town and on the 1st of July 1933 the line was absorbed by the London Passenger Transport Board. Then in 1935 to 1940 the Q stop in, was introduced on the line which included air-powered doors among other upgrades and off-peak services on the Hounslow branch were also withdrawn in 1935. During World War II, the line in West London was bombed and as a result, the Metropolitan Line stopped services running in the area at the time. Unfortunately for the Olympia Exhibition Centre, this wasn't great news as it didn't have a transport link. After the war, the Kensington Addison Road station was renamed Kensington in brackets Olympia and it is still served by a shuttle from Earls Court. Between 1949 and 59, our stock trains were built, though due to a shortage of labour and materials, only 143 tr new trains were authorised to be built. Due to platform length issues on the Edgware Road branch, more sea tr stock trains were commissioned, as they are already in use on the Circle and Hammersmith and City lines. The D stock was introduced between 1979 and 83, but due to conflict with the trade unions, one person operation was not introduced until 1985. And in 2013, the S7 stock gradually phased out the C and D stock, bringing with it air conditioning, regenerative braking, which returns 20% of its energy used to the, to the network, and a top speed of 62 miles per hour. And it still runs today. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of the district line. Thanks for watching and please do consider subscribing. See you later.